So far in our process for Fantasy Landscape, we've come up with our original theme. We've sought out high resolution reference images to build it from. We sketched out our different ways we can compose it together. I sketched it out in two different variations, mostly to show how original the sketching is and how important that is to the process of coming up with something that's transformative in your own. So neither of these is based on any one found resource. Instead, they kind of juggle the same image sources into new compositions. I chose the one I wanted, this horizontal one, and then I started rough cutting those sources, five or more, in Photoshop. Saved it as a PSD file. And we're moving on from there. So notice that I've cropped, I can crop even a little bit more closer to my edges, but not all the way to my edges because I still, in cleaning it up, might decide I need a little extra space. But by cropping, that saves a lot of memory because the computer is having to remember every pixel on every layer for whatever canvas size you've set up. And I'm working at 11 by 14 inches, actually closer to, yeah, 11 by 14 within here. This image with the extra space is around 18 inches by 14 inches. And it's at 350 pixels per inch. Remember, we always want to check resolution, make sure we're at, we're at least at eight by 10 by 300, standard print resolution. Where we left off last video was doing color alterations to the foreground here. And we do three direct adjustments as we move through. So I'm going to move back to this layer now. And I'm going to do that same thing. Image adjustments, starting with levels, the lights and darks. I don't need a tablet for this. I just use this mid-tone slider. And I decide, do I want that kind of other foreground element at least here to be brighter or do i want it to be darker or do i want it to be exactly as it is and i think i want it to be just a little bit brighter than it was and maybe even limit the highlights a little bit so that overall it's brighter but that the the highlights aren't quite as bright as the highlights in the immediate foreground so i say okay that's not a huge difference you can go back in your history which is this little icon right here, or you can use Command Z and Shift Command Z to see if you like that change. Now I go to my next adjustment, which is going to be color balance. This one is huge for making things match. This is the, the temperature of the lighting. Now that I've set this foreground, I have a better idea of how I want it to match. So I can bring a little bit more red into it. Always working on the mid-tones first. I don't want to bring too much yellow into it because it's mighty yellow already. I might even want to deaden those greens a little by pushing into magenta. And then in the shadows, I might go a little bit bluer just because it's starting to go into the mid-tones like that. And then again, with your, with your history states, you can toggle back and forth. You can also use Command-Z and Shift-Command-Z. and make sure you like what you did. I especially like how it brought out the pinks and the reds in the stone and in the, the leaves and things that are falling into the water. Okay, the final thing you can use is image adjustment hue saturation. This is a very powerful tool. You don't always need it, but if you shift the hue one way or the other, it changes the full spectrum of what you're looking at. So I might just shift it a little bit like negative two towards the warm side so that one flows a little nicely into the other. And then saturation is the overall intensity. I don't need to up that. It's already pretty intense. And if I up the saturation too much, the colors get blasted out. So I might even take that down slightly. Just very subtle. And again, you can use your history to check. 
So those are the three direct adjustments you need to remember and need to use as appropriate. They are levels, color balance, and hue saturation. We do them under image adjustments because they will directly affect the pixels. We do not do them under layer adjustments, though the same tools are there. A layer adjustment is a filter on top of all the layers underneath it. Direct adjustments will actually change the pixels in that layer. So we always do it under image adjustments, which is why I call them direct adjustments. Good time to save my work. Just Command S, knowing where it's going, how it's labeled, how I can find it if something were to happen. OK. Moving on backwards, we got the swamp here, especially the water. I can actually turn off this foreground one because I want to see how this interacts with this because they're going to be merged together. And then I'm going to go to adjustments quickly, go to levels, try to do this a little bit faster. And whoops, wrong layer. Can only affect the layer you have selected. Image adjustment levels. And I want to push this one, I think, a little bit darker in the midtones. But if I want its highlights to be a little stronger, I can always up the white slider within reason. But I think I want its midtone slider to be a little bit darker. So those shadows are more believable. I can also limit the highlights like I did for the, the midtone rocks. So that works a little bit better just for lighting. Again, you can always check it in history. But I'm not making these. Well, I was going to say I'm not making these huge steps, but that levels change made a pretty big difference to how that sits in, in place. OK, next I'm going to just do color balance, take out a little bit of the, well, maybe bring in a little bit of the red, take out a little bit of the green. Actually, we need quite a bit of green. Maybe even put a little green back in. Yeah, I'm just going to dampen the yellow a little bit by pushing it towards blue. Not a whole lot. And then I can go to hue saturation and just dim the saturation a little bit. It's intensity because this is sitting back and we're getting back to a background that's a lot less colorful. And just check the whole spectrum. If anything, maybe a plus two. So big, big change there from before I did any adjustments, right? It helps sit it back. Even though these edges are still very rough, that's helping a lot. Now I go back to this background. I'm going to keep these two open and then work on those adjustments. For this, I'm going to darken it pretty significantly, but not so much that I lose pixel definition. Maybe about there. And I can try brightening up the brights just a little bit, as long as I don't go beyond the peak here, because that means I'll start wiping out pixels. I don't want to do that. So again, another big levels change. It gives it a lot more presence. Then I go to image adjustment, color balance. This is tricky. It has a lot of cyan, kind of that powdery blue. So I might want to take it away from that just a little bit. Though I like that kind of rainbow nature it gives it. And I can decide what I want to bring out. Maybe a little less of the green, a little bit more of the magentas. And then the highlights, I want to bring out more yellow. Like so. And then for my final adjustment, hue saturation, let's try upping the saturation just a little bit. I'll say about by 10. I can play with either side of the hue. See what makes sense? Oh, it makes more sense on this side. So I'm going to do like a minus 5. So big moves with adjustments before we cut things out. 
from this to that that will help everything sit down. Also, you want to notice if things aren't going right to your edge. So on that layer, I need to just push it so it fits my composition. There we go. And if you need to enlarge something, Command T, you can just tug at it a little bit. As long as you're not holding down Shift, it won't distort. And you can use your arrow keys as well. I want to make sure I overlap my, my planned boundaries. Okay. Now we get into some of the fun stuff. This background, super colorful. How, how do I blend that with the trees in front? Well, I need to decide what trees I want to move forward as other elements. So what I'm going to do is actually use my lasso and basically rough select around certain trees. that I want to be more noticeable. Definitely these more uh, middle ground ones. In the horizon. And I'm going to copy and paste that on top, or make a duplicate of it on top. So I'm just doing a rough, just to show you, rough concept here. So I'm going to select around everything there that I want to come forward. And I'm going to duplicate it from that layer. So Command J. So I have this, right? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my eraser tool. So this is the first time we're using the eraser tool. And the eraser tool allows me under the settings, the tool settings, to choose a size. This size is a little too big. This is where your tablet can really help because a drawing tablet can be pressure sensitive. I'm going to make it pressure sensitive to size, hard round. And then I'm going to keep its hardness at 0%. So when I erase away, remember this is on a duplicate, so it's safe. When I erase away, it's going to softly blend that edge. And I want it at 100% opacity as well. So 100% opacity, soft edged eraser is going to be really helpful in doing some of this refined blending, especially as you get into the background. So just where it's really noticeable, I can work between my mouse or trackpad and my tablet, kind of soften out some of these highlights. Remember, this is after using direct adjustments. So I've got the colors and the lighting basically where I want. I'm just softening edges. This is good on organic material. It's really good with things like, like hills and water and trees. But buildings, you don't want to have a soft edge, right? So careful on that. I'm trying not to zoom in too much. but I'm trying to soften those really crisp edges. It's a tricky thing for this composition. How do I get that galaxy to kind of show through the trees 
and yet still make it look like a forest. 